Hi, my name is Carrie Matthews, and my topic today is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder um, Exercise Programming for Individuals with ADHD. So first of all, what is ADHD? This is a definition specifically relating to children, but as we'll see in a minute, it does affect all age groups. Um, ADHD is a chronic neurologically based illness characterized by a persistent pattern of inattention and or hyperactivity and impulsivity. So currently ADHD affects between three to 7% of Americans. This is kind of depending on what report you read. Um, it does affect children, youth, and adults. Um, so all age range, we typically think of it uh, related to children and youth, but it does also su significantly affect adults. It has some pretty important impacts. It can um, affect behavioral and emotional states and cause dysregulation, so an inability to really deal uh, with emotions and behaviors correctly. Um, it can also then end up in exclusion by peer groups. So this is especially important for children in the school age. Um, there may be some shunning and exclusion there. Um, there are several different causes, not one particular cause. Uh, there are genetic components, as well as factors such as uh, being born prematurely or having anoxia or lack of oxygen at birth. It also can be affected by nutrition lacks as well as social deficits as a child is growing. And there are some effective treatments, including pharmacological treatments, academic, and behavioral therapies. So what are some special considerations for um, exercise programming with individuals with ADHD? So we need to keep in mind that there is a high rate of comorbidity disorders, such as depression, disruptive behavioral disorders, and substance abuse. These are uh, highly associated with uh, individuals with ADHD. And we also need to keep in mind any therapies that are in, in use by an individual. So some of the most common medications are going to be stimulants and amphetamines. And these have some serious side effects such as insomnia and anorexia or the, um, the inability or the lack of desire to eat. So we should be aware of these as well as any nutrition or other therapy protocols that are in use. Why is exercise important? So physical activity is especially helpful for kids and adults with ADHD. It can help their focus. It can also encourage blood flow to assist the executive function in the brain. So that's the cognitive ability. It can also improve both social and cognitive development, especially in children. So the effects have been seen in both acute and long-term exercise bouts. So even one or two exercise sessions can have an effect as well as uh, long-term exercise programs. It can also be a possible adjunct treatment for medications. So when we exercise, um, the exercise releases endorphins, dopamine, and norepinephrine into the brain. Um, and the dopamine and norepinephrine are also the uh, neurotransmitters that are released by those medications that we mentioned before. So basically, exercise is boosting the effect of those medications or working in tandem in the same way as those medications. So what are some exercise programming strategies? Well, by and large, individuals with ADHD are going to be able to follow normal exercise guidelines for their age, obviously uh, with doctor's allowance and so on. But for kids, that's generally going to be about 60 minutes a day. For adults, at least 45 minutes, three to five times a week. And research has shown that outdoors is best whenever possible because that added benefit of being out in nature can help also uh, with the brain uh, coming into focus and attention. The research has also shown that shorter sessions are better for focus and moderate to high intensity is what we're usually going to be going for. That's when the heart rate is elevated, the respiratory rate is elevated, and you start to sweat, and your muscles get tired, and so on. That's usually uh, when you know that you're in the moderate to high intensity levels. Uh, research has also shown that game-like exercises are helpful to, again, hold the attention. 
And also, clearly defined goals and guidelines can be helpful, sometimes written down, you know, on a whiteboard as a reminder, you know, if you're working with kids. Um, Positive social interactions and peer reinforcement is super helpful as well uh, in exercise. Um, Reward systems can also be beneficial for some. So basically, if we achieve this goal, we will uh, reward ourselves with this end result. Um, Healthy competition can also be beneficial for some. Uh, And it's very important to find activities which are enjoyable to the individual. As we'll see in a little bit, there are so many different activity options that this should not ever be an issue. We should be able to find enjoyable activities for our clients, 100%. And in school-age children, I thought this was really interesting. Um, Even outside of the formal exercise class or exercise program, we could include some physical activity within the classroom. So some examples of this would be using a stress ball at their desk, or maybe their teacher can really put some effort into um, assigning small tasks for them, such as collecting books or running a little errand, something to uh, keep their attention and give them a little bit of physical activity within the class time. So some exercise types that could be included in a program outdoor exercise, as I mentioned, and also complex exercises are going to be really helpful to build focus and concentration, balance, timing skills, memory skills. Um, It helps individuals to have a consciousness of their actions and also to build fine motor skills. Then also, obviously, we're going to have those strength and endurance exercises that we're used to, and team sports can also be really beneficial. This gives individuals... um, a social motivation and those social goals to hold the attention longer. And here are just a few examples. And here's a list of examples. So some outdoor activities, hiking, biking, kayaking, swimming, sports, um, some complex exercises that I mentioned. Martial arts are really good. So karate, taekwondo, jiu-jitsu, judo, things like that. Rock climbing is also very uh, attention-based and focus-based, so it's also a very good complex exercise. Dance, gymnastics, yoga, these are all things that are really um, beneficial to, to center the attention and the focus. Some more examples, strength exercises, weights, uh, body weight exercises, push-ups, pull-ups, squats, things like that. Some endurance exercises, running, cycling, rowing team sports such as soccer, volleyball, baseball, and the list could go on. So there's definitely plenty of options to, again, like I mentioned before, to be interesting to the individual and to hold their attention. So when I start an exercise program, we'd obviously want to do some initial assessments. So these are going to be dependent on age. Obviously, if it's a younger child, we're not going to do a lot of uh, weight bearing, heavy weight bearing exercises, but we will assess their strength, um, their weight strength with upper and lower body, um, and we would assess their form. Then with the endurance and core assessments, again, depending on age, we could use the treadmill test, the step test, we could use agility tests such as the T test, um, the, the jump test, balance test, um, and these are things that could be done with any age group, kind of just adjusted to them. Um, and they're kind of fun, so even kids would be um, interested to do, for example, the T-test, probably. I would also include some cognitive and attention assessments. So I would do this qualitatively, take some notes from the initial session, and just write down, you know, how did I view their attention span. Um, I would also include behavioral and cognitive assessments from teachers and parents when it's a child, or some self-assessments as from an adult. So basically, I would be asking questions like, uh, are there any behavioral issues that we're trying to address with the exercise programming? Um, are there any cognitive difficulties or um, special talents, special interests that these, these individuals have? And we could even perform a small pre- or post-workout uh, focused task focus task, excuse me, to, um, to just test their focus right then and there. So this is a sample program that I came up with. I would do some minor progressions as time goes on, but I would 
pretty much hold to a, a um, rough structure, at least. This is a weekly schedule. Um, obviously, it would be adjustable to the individual or the group. Some key points would be to keep it fun. Um, do some short sets with low reps uh, to keep it interesting and entertaining. To include socialization, to progress over time, uh, but also, like I said, keep some routine. To include the participants in the activities, so or in the planning, actually. So I have one here on Wednesday, which I called Kids' Choice, which is basically where I would suggest every Monday or, you know, the previous meeting session, I would suggest to them, hey, what um, what activity do you want to do next time around? And they would actually have that ownership. So they'd have something to look forward to and they would have that, that um, autonomy and that ownership of it. On the off days, I would also suggest that kids stay active. Uh, so, for example, on the weekends, I wanted to include the family. So maybe some outdoor family activities like hiking or biking or going to the skate park. Um, and on those weekdays, maybe they would do some dance classes or martial arts classes or rock climbing, something like that. Um, some other key points that I wanted to include in this um in this program would be in the warm-ups. Those are kind of more like games where the, they're very child-centric. Um, so, for example, playing Simon Says, where the, the kids can take turns being Simon. Um, and then in the cool-down sessions, those are really things that are going to help bring them back uh, to focus and kind of center their their energies and their and their thoughts. So some of these could be some stretches uh, with audio guidance, um, some deep breathing through a story that, you know, kind of goes into the breathing techniques through an interesting story for kids, as well as uh, maybe a yoga session. So kind of a, a wide range of things to keep their attention, but also to involve them and then finally to uh, bring them back to focus. So we all know that reassessments are very important. This would be dependent on the individual goals. I would do a constant reassessment after each session, but especially periodically every couple of weeks, I would do more formal assessment. And I would also do um, those reassessments with parents and teachers every few weeks as well. And I would adjust according to the goals. So are the goals more behavioral in nature or are they strength building in nature or sports based in nature? And I would adjust the program according to those specific goals. And I would adjust my questioning of those individuals towards those specific goals. So I wanted to include a couple of further resources as well. Um, Jim Pansies is a very cool nonprofit organization out of the UK. They have a lot of uh, really great exercise ideas, physical activity ideas for children with disabilities, including ADHD. Um, one really amazing idea was to do like an obstacle course, to build an obstacle course for the kids. And then um, their physical activity through that time is to, you know, climb over things, climb under things and get that physical activity in, in a way that's focused and really interesting for them. And then there's a YouTube channel called How to ADHD. And she has some really interesting ideas there as well as going into the science behind how exercise affects ADHD. So two really interesting resources for further research. And finally, here are my references. Thank you very much for listening. I hope it was informational.